My name is Philip Muigambutia and I'm born again. Christ has been so faithful to me, forgiving me and giving me an opportunity to be called his child. I welcome you as we share the word of God this and we encourage one another in the word of God and I believe God is going to greatly bless you. In Luke chapter 16, Verse 2. The Bible says, very early in the, in the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. And they asked each other, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? These women we are worried because of this big stone that was put at the tomb. Their desire was to see Jesus. They wanted to see the body of Jesus, but there was a stone at the entrance of the tomb. Many of us have the desire to see God. But I want to submit to you, your desire should remain intact, no matter your fears and worries. The women feared that there will be a very big storm and they have no one to help them remove the storm. Do you have the same problem in life? That the stone is so huge that you even don't know who is going to remove that stone in your life? You want to see God is true, but the hindrance is your children. The hindrance is your career. The hindrance is your day-to-day activity. That is what hinders you from seeing God. The Bible says, these women, when they left their place, they carried very expensive perfumes to come and conduct a ritual. They had something to do to show Jesus and to show God that they love Jesus so much. But there was a problem. It is true, they prepared overnight. They left very early on the first day of the week. Very early when it still it was so cold, possibly rainy, possibly windy. But they left very early in the morning. But they knew there was a hindrance. They never gave up. They never said, we are not going to go because we don't know who will remove the stone. Anyway, they choose to go. And the Bible says when they were on their way, they asked one another this very simple question. And they asked each other. Who will roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb? At the entrance of your blessings, at that entrance of that thing that you have longed for so long, there is a stone. The devil is a liar. Sickness could be a stone. He have lied that poverty could be a stone. But the Bible says in verse 4 of Luke 16, but when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. May this be the day that God is going to roll stones that are so huge in your life away. The stone that have been blocking you, that thing that has hindered you for so long from seeing God, from coming into encounter with God, from accessing your miracles and your blessings and your healing, that thing that have hindered your family from enjoying what God intended you to enjoy, may that stone be rolled away in the mighty name of Jesus. Some of us have not been able to see God because we wonder. This big stone is our sins. We have sinned against him. We have gone against his will in many ways. Just think about your life. What is it that hinders you from seeing God? Is it the decisions you made in past? In his own ways, he can roll it away. The Bible says there were angels. There were young men dressed in white robe sitting at the right side and they were alarmed. They were alarmed. They saw angels seated at the tomb. It is true the stone was to stop Jesus from coming out. But it was rolled away that Jesus would come out and go to the next level 
in the face of his, his life and mission on earth. That thing that have hindered you from coming out and going to the next level in life, may it be rolled away. In-laws, may the wrong friends, may the wrong in-laws, may the wrong brother-in-law and sister-in-law and cousins be rolled away that you can be able to access what God has in store for you. The Bible says, and they looked up. They saw the stone, which was very large. You will be able to see that thing that stopped you as you move on and as you prosper. You intended to begin a business. It has never picked. Every time you start, you fail. You start, you fail. You start, you fail. May that thing that have always made you fail be rolled away in the mighty name of Jesus. Some of us, we are alarmed. Because there are things that have died in our lives. We cherish those things, but they died. Some careers are dead. Brilliant names are dead. The fame is dead. But here is the challenge. The Bible says, do not be alarmed. The angel said to the women, do not be alarmed. He said, you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has risen. He, he is not here. This is a place where dead people are kept. He is not here. He is no longer dead. He resurrected. He risen. He took off and he went long ago. Why are you looking for who is alive among the dead? There is resurrection, my brother and sister. There is resurrection in the mighty name of Jesus. Marriages and friendship and relationship can resurrect. The Bible says in Revelation, remember the first love. The first, the initial. God is so concerned about who he has been to you from the beginning. A healer. So he can heal you even today. A redeemer. He can redeem you even today. In, in Romans, in Romans the Bible tells us, in Romans 10 and verse 13, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So it doesn't matter what has died. It doesn't matter what they have pressed on top of you. Possibly the files are not clean. Possibly promotion is a dream. Possibly going for further studies is a dream. You try to take loan is not possible. You have tried. Diseases is your portion. But I came to tell you that stone of diseases can't be rolled away in the mighty name of Jesus. You say, Mchungaji, I'm not in good terms with, with my parents. It's true. God can roll away the stone of hatred. And here comes a new relationship. God can roll away the stone of conflict and fighting and wars in our relationship. This is my desire. That as I share this word in Romans 10 and verse 12, the Bible says, for there is no difference between Jews and Gentiles. The Lord is Lord of all. The, the rich, the richly, he richly blesses all who call on his name. Learn to call on God's name. Look at these people who rise very early in the morning on Sunday and then we are going to the tomb. Do you remember to raise up early and to go to the house of God to worship? No matter the church that you worship, Rise up very early like these women. Take your gifts and go to the house of God. Your gifts are the offerings. Your gift is yourself. Your gift is the blessings that you have for the weak, the poor, the servants of God, and all the other. Take them and go to the house of God. That is the meeting point between you and God. That's where we break the bread in remembrance of his blood and his body that was broken for us. Don't stay at home and trust the television. Join with the last in the house of God. The television will never officiate the wedding of your children. The television will never bury you for heavenly sake. The television will not be able to fellowship with you. But when you go to the house of God, you can fellowship with brethren and you can be able to, come, to become one thing as Christ intends. Look at what I've just reminded you. That there are stones in your life that need to be rolled away. But also look at what the Bible is saying. That every person who calls in the name of the Lord will be saved. It means when you call in the name of the Lord, those stones will be rolled away. 
Listen, I tell you. When you come to church, create time to pray. I mean, it's the, the program of the service. Tell God something about your personal life. Tell God you wish those angels who rolled away the stone during the times of Jesus to roll away the stone in your life. Make it a passionate prayer in your life. Mention that thing that harbors you. Is it the case you have in court? Is it a land you bought and somebody is taking it? Is it a conflict over your investment? What is it that have made you to lack peace on this earth? Tell God to send angels. And the angel of the Lord, the Bible says, they hover around to protect you and to guide you and to stand with you. We are not in our own, but because of God, we can. The Bible has told us here severally in, 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 in Romans. The Bible says, what is it that can separate us from the love of God? What is it that can separate us from the love of God? There is nothing. It is a choice we make to run away from God. You feel so tired on Sunday that you cannot go to church. All the disciples, they never went to the tomb on that first day. They were, they were afraid. They feared. They were tired. Some went to sleep, but rather locked themselves in a room. But the Bible says clearly that there were women who walked in all this journey with Jesus, but they still chose to wake up very early, to go and offer a sacrifice, to go and give a sacrificial uh, 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 sense and gifts to the tomb of Jesus. They wanted to see Jesus. Raise up very early, every Sunday morning, and go to the house of God. And God is going to bless you so much. I remind you, every Sunday, it's a very important day to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. He died he resurrected with a reason and a purpose. And the women began the first service. And when they met with angels and they were given the great commission that Jesus is resurrected, they went all the way telling people, I want you to have the same testimony. And you go in the village and everywhere telling people that your life have resurrected, that you have died with Christ and you have raised in a new creature. It doesn't matter what it is that have died. It doesn't matter the size of the stone. It is not the size of the stone. It is the faith that you have. It is the size of your faith. When, when, when David used a very small stone to kill God, it was not the size of the stone that mattered, but it's the faith that David had. When the angel of the Lord rolled away the very, very big stone away, it was not the size of the stone. No, but it was because of the accomplishment of the mission that God had in, with, with the humanity. The similarly, God has a great mission that he wants to accomplish in your life. He's not done with you. You're still a clay in the hand of a potter. He wants to make you to be that thing that he'll use to take his kingdom to the next level. You'll be blessed financially that you can bless his kingdom. You will get promotion that you can promote his work. You'll be uplifted that you can uplift his mission. You will be taken to the next level that you can take the gospel to the next level. Never fear or look back. God wants to use you. Let us pray. I speak blessing to every person who have listened to this word, O oh Lord. And believe everything that have died in our lives will resurrect in the mighty name of Jesus. Some of our names need to resurrect. Our name would have been dragged into mud. But you are the God who resurrects our names. You are a God of second chance. Jesus got a second chance to live in his own body. And the Bible says, even when they put a very big stone, the angel of the Lord removed the stone. Stone is so significant in our lives today. Some families, the big stone they have is drunkenness. Some ladies wonder, how are they going to be able to remove that big stone? But our Heavenly Father, you live in forever. You are so powerful to remove every stone in the life of every believer listening and watching me right now. The stone of sickness is made be rolled away in the mighty name of Jesus. The stone of conflict may be rolled away in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Families that are living in disagreement all through, may those stones be rolled away in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus.
David used a very small stone to kill Goliath. That small thing that you have, may God anoint it to become so big that you can be able to achieve a lot with that little thing. David said, with God, the stones is able. And indeed, with God, it was. I believe with God, that small business you have, that small capital you have, that papers that are not so strong. Oh, I believe if you trust in God, we will come out of the graves. Tombs is not our place to live in. Hospital beds is not our place to live in. May there be healing to every person who is sick in hospital right now. You believe in Jesus, receive this is your portion. Jesus told the paralytic, arise, take your mat and go. He spit on the ground and took some, some, some mud and put on someone, someone's eyes and told, go, bathe yourself, and they were able to see. I present a Jesus who was confronted with dead men, women, and children, and he resurrected them. Nothing is so hard for him if you only trust him. This is not possible if you have not given your life to Jesus. To give your life to Jesus is to accept that Jesus is Lord and Savior. It's to acknowledge that you are a sinner and to surrender your life to Jesus in totality. And you begin this walk of faith that every day you'll have a moment to tell God, forgive me, and praise me. Just like a vehicle is serviced, once you acquire the vehicle, you keep servicing the vehicle. Once you acquire salvation, you keep on walking with Jesus. He keeps servicing you every day. If you want to get saved, and you want to surrender your life to Jesus, repeat this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I have so many stones in my life that need to be rolled away. And the stone of sin is so heavy. I regret knowing who I have been and what I have been in life. Knowing that I have wronged you in many ways. The sins of omissions and the sins of commission. Knowing that, Lord, I have not been faithful to you. I have not honored your word. I admit that I am a sinner. May your blood wash me, Lord. Wash me and cleanse me. And count me as your child. I refuse the work of the enemy. I consecrate and set aside myself for your work, Lord. That from today going on, you remain, you remain to be a very good God in my life. I am born again because Christ, you have forgiven me. Count me as your child and help me to walk with you. Give me people who can stand with me and people who can fellowship and encourage and support me in this work. In Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. If you have just said that prayer with me, present yourself in the house of God tomorrow and give a testimony to brethren. If you tell your pastor that you have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, and that very heavy stone in your life will be rolled away. My name is Lieutenant Canon Philip Mwikambutia, a priest with the Anglican Church, Diocese of Nairobi. ACK St. Barnabas, Otiende Langata. We welcome you for our services tomorrow or the next Sunday. We have Holy Communion service and also we share the word of God, which is truth, and also we worship God in truth and spirit. When you come to worship, when you go to worship, carry your tithe, carry your thanksgiving, carry your offering. Trust God that your offering will speak on your behalf. God bless you so much. I love you. Welcome.